Listen up, ladies. Listen up, listen up. Calvin cycle is next. So at this stage, at this stage, and you wrote about it, the ATP is now in the stroma. And the NADPH is also in the stroma. Because that's where the Kelvin cycle takes place, in the stroma. And the Kelvin cycle will look familiar to you. Because it kind of looks like what? From cell aspiration. The citric acid cycle. But the players are different. So look at here now. The carbon dioxide will come into the chloroplast. It will first go through the stomata and, begin, and go through the cell membrane by simple diffusion and get into the chloroplast. Now the CO2 is in the stroma. The ATP and the NADPH, they came from the light reaction, right? We just talked about them. The Rubisco, the enzyme, and RUBP, they're already in the stroma. They're always there. So these guys are always there. Like oxaloacetate was always there in the citric acid cycle. And notice something that at the end of it, you're regenerated. Just like oxaloacetate was re regenerated in the citric acid cycle. So here are the players, RUBP, Rubisco the enzyme, carbon dioxide from the, st from the stomata, the ATP and the NADPH from the light reaction. Okay, we got everything? Yeah, okay, let's start. We got everything? Yes, okay, let's start. What happens now is RUBP picks up a carbon and becomes this molecule. This is five carbons plus one makes six carbons. The interesting thing about this molecule is if you try to catch it, you won't. Because as soon as it's made, it breaks into two molecules right away. So as soon as you make it, it breaks into half. That's, it breaks into two, two of these. So now watch this. I just said it based on one carbon. One of these plus one of these would make two, one of these, which turns into two of these. But the numbering system here is based on three. Catch it, please. It's based on three. So now we'll do three of these. With three of these, we'll make three of these. But all three of them will break and make six. Are we catching the numbers here? Confusing for some students. I talk about based on one, 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 and then two. But now the picture is showing you based on three. So it's three, 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 and then hurry up, break it. They become six. Now this molecule is called 3PG, 3-phosphoglycerate, uh, 3PG. And that's, this is when you first use the ATP that is made in the light reaction. That's why I say the ATP that is made in the light, light reaction, most of it is actually used up during the Kelvin cycle in, for making the glucose. Well, what if the plant wants to use ATP for other purposes? Remember, it has a mitochondria for that. So the ATP that is made during the light reaction is now being used to carry out this reaction. It's adding a phosphate. Look, this only had one phosphate. Now it has two. So it's adding a phosphate. This step here is called carbon fixation. It's a fancy word for the addition of a carbon. Because that's what is happening. You're taking carbon and you're adding it or you're fixing it into RUBP to make it a six carbon molecule which quickly breaks into two, three carbon molecules. So this area here, this phase here is called carbon fixation. Now, some of you will come to me after the exam asking or complaining that I never talked about carbon fixation. <coughs> well, I'm talking about it. How's that? Of course I have to talk about it. I can't talk about the Kelvin cycle without talking about carbon fixation. It's just the problem is you're not sometimes not listening. So I'm talking about it. Carbon fixation is the addition of carbon to RUBP to eventually make two of these molecules. That's carbon fixation. The next phase is reduction of the, bi the 1, 3, 
by bisphosphoglycerate. See, when you add a phosphate to this one, you're adding another phosphate. Now it becomes 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate. One means the first carbon has a phosphate. Three means the third carbon has a phosphate. And because there are two phosphates, that's where this is bis, bis, two phosphates on a glycerate. That's where the, the names come in play. The glycerate is now going to be a product of this reaction right here. It starts as RUBP, then it becomes 3 phosphoglycerate, then it becomes 1 3 base phosphoglycerate. Then, when you add electrons and hydrogen to this, it becomes glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Did you hear this word before? Yes. Yeah, where? When? When? In glycolysis of cellular respiration. Very good. Look at it, it's the reverse. Listen to this very Pay attention please. In glycolysis, we started out with glucose and it broke down to two what? G3Ps. In photosynthesis, you're actually making the G3Ps. And watch, 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 look, look. You're gonna bring it back to glucose. That's what you're doing. And because I said photosynthesis is the opposite of cellular respiration and I meant it. This is cellular respiration. This is photosynthesis. So the Kelvin cycle is now going to be making G3P. This is actually half of the glucose. It's not glucose. It's half of the glucose. How many G3Ps do you need to make one glucose? Two. This is G3P. This is G3P. Put it together to make glucose. So, some students look at this the wrong way. Watch this now. They see that we have six of them. And they say, oh, then the plant can make how many glucose molecules with six? Three. Three. Yes, it can, but it won't. No way. Because if it does that, if it takes all six of these and makes three glucose molecules out of them, guess what? It will be the last three glucose molecules it will make because this will shut down. Of course it can, but it won't because the last phase of the Calvin cycle is regeneration of the RUBP. You have to remake this. And look what it does. It uses five out of the six to regenerate the RUBP because the Calvin cycle says this, priority number one is to remake the RUBP to complete the cycle. Because if I need to make more G3P, I'll just do the cycle again. But if I use all the G3Ps at this day, stage, that's not good. Because it will shut down the cycle. Because you won't be able to remake this. So the highest priority for the Calvin cycle is to regenerate the RUBP. So look what it does. It takes five out of the six G3Ps and uses it to remake the RUBP. And the sixth one is the one that comes out. Remember, this is not glucose. This is half of that glucose. So you have to turn the cycle on again three times to make the other half. So it turns out that for each carbon of glucose, and glucose has how many carbons? Six. Six. For each carbon of glucose, you have to turn the cycle on once. So how many turns of the cycle per glucose? It's not two. It's six. I say it again. For each carbon of glucose, you turn the cycle once. But you have six carbons in glucose. So you turn the cycle six times. Okay, how many turns of the cycle if you want to make three glucose molecules? 18. 18. Why what? Why what? <laughs> Let me do it again. But this time, listen. Each turn of the cycle adds one carbon of the glucose. 
How many carbons per glucose? Six. So to make one glucose molecule, you have to turn this on three, six times. You only had me say it three times. You have to turn it on six times. One carbon, one turn. Carbon, I mean, glucose has six, so six turns. Now I ask you, how many turns of the cycle do you have to make to make three glucose molecules? 18. Now it's 18, right? See, once you understand it, see, it starts out with listening to it first. That's half of the battle, if not all the battle. You have to hear it. And if you're talking to your next door neighbor, that means you're not hearing it. Okay, how about four glucose molecules? 24. Very good. So simple. Right? Simple. So I think I proved myself that the Kelvin cycle is actually the reverse of cellular respiration. Thank you.